Good morning to you, Javel. Good morning, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Those who are joining us by way of Facebook Live as well. This morning, we have Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Rav E. Gonzalez, who will provide an update as it relates to Lhasa Frey to the nation. Prime Minister. Good morning, the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines at home and abroad, and the residents in our beloved country. I greet also the members of the press. I report what has already been published widely on various media platforms. I report formally that at approximately 8.42 a.m., that's today, an explosive eruption at the Lassofre volcano occurred. The ash plume extended vertically to about 10 kilometers. I've been advised that a pilot departing Canawan reported ash plume up to 25,000 feet heading eastward. The evacuation continues. But before I speak to certain matters relevant to the evacuation, I have Professor Robert Robertson, who has been here with us, with his team from the Seismic Research Center at the University of the West Indies. This is based in St. Augustine, Trinidad, to speak to the nation as to precisely what happened, what currently is ongoing, and what is expected over the next what is expect few hours and days and maybe weeks. And after Professor Robertson has spoken, I will continue to provide some other information. Richie, are you there? Yes, yes, Prime Minister. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to everyone. It's in the Grenadines. Um, yes, as, as people know, I know, know when to expose the to expose the um, and it's on um, Essentially, and it's on the, Essentially the, onset the, the, the onset of this started with um, what we call continuous tremor. The volcano overnight had gone into um, continuous tremor, where essentially it was shaking at the summit all the time, shaking at the instruments that we could pick up. You can pick it up, people who were there. Um, so we moved from banded tremor, which these bands of tremor, to continuously tremoring. And then at about um, 8.37 this morning, in fact, we started to see a signal um, and, and, you know, and the signal slowly grew in amplitude uh, it increased the size of the, the, the shaking or the amount of shaking that you have. Uh, and, and then by 841, you, you had people realize there was an explosion. In fact, the, the, the punching through um, of, of the vent and, and of the dome that was there um, would have happened sometime after 837, probably to 841. Uh, by the time and the boom went up, it actually had a big explosion. Um, when continue to rise, Prime said from reports, it's now, in fact, um, it's now estimated in some areas there, there are ash clouds uh, from um, aviation you, resources you broke, that say that pilots you, you, you between. You broke up, they really broke up there. If you, re, you yes. say it is estimated okay. now, if you go back over. Right, so, so I have, right, I have a report from, of ash clouds um, reported by pilots between 20 miles north to 50 miles southeast of St. Vincent, and uh, really up to 29,000 feet. Um, we had estimated the height to about 10 kilometers, looking at the observatory here, just uh, sort of estimating it. So it's around that, that kind of, um, around 10K, that's how high it went. Um, and it seems that basically you have a set of ash that went off towards the east uh, at a higher level and a set that went off towards the west at a lower level. 
And, and of course, once the ash is in the atmosphere, it eventually falls back down. So areas um, as far as south as, as Belmont, where we are at, at the observatory here, began to find to feel ash. So we, we had some ash fall here. Um, all of this is expected. Essentially, what has happened is that, as we had said, the batch of magma that had been trying to come up for the longest while, it seems that it lies either right at the surface or, or quite close to the surface. And then overnight, it punched through and it has cleared, you could say it's cleared the throat of the volcano. And so after the, after the explosion, the tremor and the shaking went on um, for, for about 40 minutes or so. And the songs went on after, after it had punched through and caused the column, it went, um, it continued roaring for a little while, so to speak. Um, so the, 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 the full, but after that, within about an hour, it then has gone back down to quiet. Uh, not so much quiet as it was before, though. It, it sort of, the tremoring continued for quite a little while, up to about a little over an hour. And, and we now back into sort of a quiet period in between. Now, what has happened is that the explosive eruption, as you had said, could start, has started. And once it has started, it's possible that you could have more explosions like these. Um, essentially, there is fresh magma, fresh material, gas rich, gas rich enough to cause an explosion. Um, right close to the surface. Once that is there, it could generate an explosion. Um, the, the first one might have been not necessarily the biggest one. It's possible that you could have explosions that go higher and carry plumes higher in the atmosphere than this one did. Um, the areas that's going to be affected most are still the areas we have said, which is the volcano, it's the possibility for pyroclastic flows are the volcano itself, the red areas, uh, the periphery of the orange areas in terms of pyroclastic flows and surges. But mainly the rest of this is probably going to be affected only by ash. Most of the ash is going to stay in the northern part of the country. So I would be surprised if a lot of ash gets to the green and the and yellow areas even. Um, but really that depends on the wind direction. The ash goes, the plume goes up, it explodes upwards. And then after a while, it, it, it just gets caught by the ash and where, where, by the wind, sorry. Wherever the wind takes it, it goes. So if the wind, for us, luckily, most of the time, the wind blows either to the east or the west. The upper level winds go off the east, the lower level to the west. But sometimes the wind comes to the south. If that happens when you have a, 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 a one of these explosions, that should come to the south. Also, if you have a really, really big explosion, bigger than we've seen, the ash plume, in a bit goes out and it just spreads in all directions. The spread, if the spread is big enough above the volcano, it can spread further to the south. So that's the kind of the two ways in which the ash will get to the south. But it's mainly the ash we'd expect affecting green and yellow areas, not the things that's going to, um, you know, potentially kill people like on the volcano itself, the paraclassic flows and the surges. Um, we wouldn't be surprised if this continues for the next few days, the next few weeks. Um, we hope this is more smaller eruption, so it doesn't go on for longer than that. But we, we enter explosive phase, and it, it's necessary now for us just to watch, monitor it, see, see what it's indicating, what is it in that it's, it's really just in this phase, it's going to get bigger, smaller, whether it's head towards an end or not. And that's what the monitoring team would be doing, collecting more data, trying to analyze them and trying to find out how far and track this explosive eruption. But for the rest of the people who have evacuated, you really would have to um, uh, probably expect some ash every now and then in the south, southern areas. But otherwise, once you're off the mountain, um, you should be good. I would suggest to you that if you're still one of those persons who are anywhere on the mountain who are saying that you're going to wait it out and see what happens, the first one is not necessarily the worst one. The first bang is not necessarily the biggest bang this volcano would give. So you, you would have experienced the first one if you were there still. Um, just bear that in mind. If you insist in being there still, I would suggest that you move south. I think that's all I'll have to say on it, unless there's more any questions. Thank you very much. In relation to the ash, in to the, far, the ash, reports that you have far, received, the reports that you have, um, how, yeah. much, how much of it has gone out to sea and how much you think has been on the land? I think most of it would have gone out to sea. Um, I don't to see or on the volcano itself. Um, okay. In terms of the landmass, most of it would be on the volcano itself. Uh, okay. Dominantly is, is, is out to sea. And, and the stuff that I would, that would find for the salt would be the finer material. The coarser material, the thicker deposits of ash would be on the volcano. Um, one of the things that we're going to do as soon as we get a chance, go out and start um, actually identifying that a bit, cutting ash and seeing how thick it is in different places. So we'll have a better idea of that as the day goes out. Well, assuming there's no more exposure, then we can actually go on to that. Okay.
Any, any um, member of the any, media any has any questions for Professor Robertson? Well, if, if you, there are none, so, Richie, well, you can go back to your work, and we will, we will keep right. in touch on an ongoing basis. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, and see you next time. Thank you. I, I want to report broadly what has been taking place on the evacuation and, and all associated um, preparatory steps as we go forward and as the, the evacuation plan is, on, is unfolding and being rolled out. Let's just recall that at 4.30 yesterday afternoon, I made the order for evacuation. I issued that order. So we had about two, two and a half hours before nightfall. And the systems have been working, which we have, the NEMO systems. We have had some hiccups, particularly in respect of road transportation on the northeastern side. And that is partly understandable at the, 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 the very hour itself. Um, Julian Francis had to ensure that the, the Braxa fuel, uh, diesel fueling station at, at um, Rabaka was open so that people can get diesel and to get Lully gas station to open so that they can, people can get diesel and gasoline. And, and the movements, they were a little later. I'm talking about movements by minibuses were a little later than what happened, I've been advised, down on the western side, on the leeward side, where there has been a good movement by boat, of course, because of the Atlantic side. We don't have the ports, the facilities there for as we have on the western side for for vessels to go the estimate which um julian gave me and it, it wasn't disputed by by nemo when i raised it with with michelle this morning about 4500 persons would have moved of course persons would have moved I'm talking about moving by, by the buses, the minibuses, and by, by um, the boats, and by private transportation. And you had roughly the number which was given to me by Michelle this morning. She hadn't gotten all the tallies yet. It was in the region of 2,000 persons inside of shelters. There were 20 shelters operational some more than others, and some at a better level of preparedness than others. Some persons have gone into guest houses, um, hotels, and we want to see an expansion of that number. In fact, I've been in touch with, with um, Michelle Forbes about this at Nemo and the Permanent Secretary in Tourism who is responsible for this because I'm very concerned. I want to see the elderly persons, the persons who have health problems, um, people who are shut-ins. I want to see them being placed in the guest houses and in hotels. It will cost more money but I don't want the operation, and I made that clear to be run as though we, we are, it's a penny pinching NGO operation. And the hotels have indicated, the guest houses beforehand, that they have about, 
I, I was told about 800 rooms, and I think we, you know, we can call other persons who have not, who didn't indicate before, to get more. But I'd like to see, as I said, the elderly persons go there, the people who are shut-ins, um, sometimes particular types of families, depending on the, 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 the risk profile in relation to particular, particular families. Because, let's face it, being in a shelter, which is a school, even though you have a cot and you have a bed, and your meals are coming, um, it's not home. And the quality of people's homes have improved markedly over the last 20 years. So that over the last 30 years, so that we don't we don't want persons to experience conditions in the camps, in the shelters, which are really too onerous. We know that they would be onerous, the very nature of going in a shelter, clearly. So, and, and I would like to see if the hotel rooms, the guest house rooms, be filled, and if there are others who would like to come on, on, on target, even not only on the mainland, but also in 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 Beckway, we can transport them by the ferry. But the hotels have been asking that the persons who come into the hotels that they be vaccinated and that they be tested which is not unreasonable in all the circumstances, save and except those who may be medically assessed for one reason or the other as to not sh who should not be, be, be vaccinated. And I think that's, it will, it, having more in the hotel rooms and the, and the guest houses would increase the bill, the cost of the evacuation. But we will have to deal with that day by day, see Jesus. Um, and, and, I, and I want to have that message go out clearly to, to, to everyone. I don't want us to begin by young, strong, robust persons rushing to go into the hotel rooms when it is easier for them to maneuver inside of a inside of a shelter. So these, sometimes the, 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 the Nemo will get it right and sometimes they may get it wrong in those, making those judgments. And, and persons on the ground would be making those judgments. Not me, not anybody high up in Nemo, but that I, it's, but in all of this, I want everybody to cooperate. I want us to be I don't want us to get frustrated. I don't want us to panic. I want us to be disciplined. I want us to be orderly. Now, in respect of the persons to move regionally, the, I've been in touch with the, this morning the Prime Minister of Grenada, the Prime Minister of Antigua, the Prime Minister of Dominica. When I leave here, I have to go and talk to the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. I didn't get him the Prime Minister of, um, of St. Kitts, Nevis. But in the case of Dominica, Grenada, and Antigua, they would be ready certainly by about Sunday maybe Monday, to, to receive persons. They naturally have to, places have been closed up, hotels for instance, or guest houses, and they have to, they have to clean them up. They have to put them in a state of readiness. And uh, 
I want to say this, and every time when I've raised the issue of, well, tell me if I have to send resources to feed, and the immediate answer is, listen, don't, don't worry yourself about that. Um, it is very touching that there are families in Antigua and Grenada and St. Lucia and Dominica who are calling in and say that they will take people, if need be, into their homes. Amazing, eh? On this dangerous road to Jericho, we have the Good Samaritans. Um, the chief medical officer would be identifying the persons who are already vaccinated so that we can get them on the, on the, the ship. You see there's a ship in the harbor. Two of them there now. Good. And um, we, the ships don't have enough personnel at the moment to keep people on the ships. But they have enough personnel to transport persons to these destinations. But Simone Kiza Beach tells me that what she wants to do is to, the chief medical officer, is that those who are vaccinated, she can get them going there on the vessel, those on the ships, those who to go to particular destinations, if they choose to, this is a voluntary business. And the they would, those who are, are not yet vaccinated, but who would be vaccinated, you wouldn't want to send them immediately after vaccination. You'd want to hold them keep them for a day or two because if you, some persons upon vaccination, you know, they develop a, an itch, a, a little wooziness in the head. You know how that is. Some people say so you would like to keep them there. So there's two days and so on. So there are some matters which have to be done, dealt with. Um, and then the, the ships are doing, I've, I've, uh, 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 there are certain things we have to do with them. But the, I've spoken to one of the cruise line's leadership this morning, and, you know, I must tell you, the way in which people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and in ordinary people and in Grenada and in Dominica, St. Lucia and Antigua have responded to put people in their homes, strangers, bring tears to my eyes. I love this Caribbean. I want to thank the minibus operators who have thus participated, and I'm asking all of them to participate. I know your bus costs money and so on, and you'll be paid. Don't worry about that. But I want you to help. And today, with the explosive eruption, I want you to help in moving the people and persons who have private vehicles to help also. And in some places, if you go into a shelter, you may not end up at the shelter permanently. 
because that might also be a clearing house for you to go to a hotel or a guest house or maybe to go somewhere else. Of course, large numbers of persons still would have to stay in the shelters. But the more we get persons who can go into homes and who can go into the hotels and the guest houses, whether here or outside of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, for persons who may wish to go, that we, we should do so. Because this is not going to be like, why, why I'm anxious for that? This is not going to be simply like a hurricane where it might be a, a seven day business. In some cases, a two day business. Professor Robertson had indicated that depending on the extent of the, 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 the explosion, and the damage done, it could be four months. The, I spoke to the Vice Chancellor of the University, well, he called me, Sir Hilary Beckles, and before that, Prime Minister Holness called me. And of course, same thing like the government of Trinidad and Tobago, they want to know what they can do and help. Well, I told in the case of Jamaica, I said, listen, we're going to be able to take care of the security and all these sort of things around here and we would have enough supplies and anything we need, it would be nearby. So, um, and I told them what is happening broadly with, with Cairo Common, which has responded very well. And he said, listen, if you have some students, we have dorms at the university. You're talking about students, much your students like those at community college. So, for instance, from those areas, the, the red zone or neighboring adjacent areas in the orange zone where there may be problems. To go, to go and occupy dorms there, they can continue to study this by distance because this is what they're doing in any case here, what they have their device. And that is something which I would also explore. It would be a tremendous educational experience. And I want, I want us in the region to use natural disasters like these to strengthen the bonds of regionalism. It's not that we are not taking care of our own. Clearly we are doing that. But it brings home that we are one Caribbean family. That is the way we, we are at the moment. And I, I just want to say to, again, to all the persons involved in the evacuation exercise, I want to thank you for what you have been doing. I want to thank the minibus operators. I want to thank people who are working at the shelters, the teachers, everybody who is at Nemo, and so on and so forth the nurses, all the health workers, everybody. And together we will do this well. And don't pay attention to the hiccups. And let us have no contention and confusion. The systems are working. We have had some hiccups here and there, which is understandable, and I have forewarned about that. But by and large, we are proceeding pretty well. And very much so I want to ease the discomfort of having to leave your home and having to go to a shelter. We know it's a... You have to do it because it's dangerous to stay in the red zone or in adjacent areas to the red zone. I want to thank the people who with the vessels. And there it is. Um, as you see, members of the cabinet here, I have work to do. I, um, it's not, this business is not a continuing university seminar. I have to keep the 
Republican form, but at the same time, I have to balance everything. And um, very much so, I want to get on to see how many more persons we can get into the, the hotels and the guest houses, and if we can get even more of those. I don't know if you have any questions. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I, I, I well up in, with tears on, um, I regret, well, not sorry. I regret I well up in tears when I think about the goodness of the heart of our people and our Caribbean brothers and sisters. Any questions? Well, we go on, to co we, we continue to work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. That concludes our briefing here at uh, Cabinet Room, the third such in the last 24 hours. We, of course, will keep you updated. We uh, hope that you would uh, stay with this station. For